coming up on this week's Salt and Sauce Chat Show. I don't like it. It's a well-known story that uh, me and Sean was both right off our nappers and he needed moral support and I jumped on there with the maracas, shut these maracas like mad and done me like me dancing what I do. The timing was just perfect for us with the FCC explosion, the ACN, the been on factory records. Uh, we was the pro- a, a lads band at the time, you know what I mean? So we brought all the lads together from different football cultures, all coming together and not battling and fighting each other, you know what I mean? And it, it was a great moment in time. Well, we are, we're friends to life now. He's one, he's one of my best friends, you know what I mean? He's a great cook there. And he's also, uh, don't, I, I, can, I don't know if I should be telling you, but I'll tell you anyway. Go for the best. Um, throughout the lockdown, he's been quite busy himself, but he's done a great single with... Um, Welcome along to another episode of the Salt and Sauce Chat Show. I'm David Simmons, and on tonight's guest, absolutely delighted to be joined by Mark Berry, aka Bez, from the Happy Mondays. Bez, thanks for coming on, mate. Yeah, how do you, David? Finally on your show. Ah, yeah. I know, I know, it's been a few weeks. <laughs> we got there, mate. So, we've got something really exciting coming up we're going to talk to you about. Uh, we'll do that very shortly. But first of all, um, how's life been treating you throughout the whole pandemic, mate? How's lockdown been? Yeah, well, the, the first part of the lockdown, the first three months, uh, we had a great time. It was like being on holiday. For the first time ever, I had nowhere to go. We had a glorious summer. Uh, I had all my family staying with me, so we had such a brilliant time as a family. And uh, I really loved it. But the only unfortunate thing for me is the amount of cider I drank and uh, all the rubbish food I ate. I was, like, I was overeating and overdrinking. I know that feeling, mate. I'm in the same. I think a lot of people can obviously resonate with that and probably felt they did the same thing. It was it was a bit of luxury the first time, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, for me. It was uh, I had such a great time. It was unbelievable. Like I say I thought I was on holiday, <laughs> and with the weather what we had as well, it was fantastic. You know what I mean? Well, it's getting a bit. Uh, no, I'm fed up of it now. You know what I mean? I can't wait for it to be over. Uh, we want to see the back of this thing and get back to normal life. But I, I, I never imagined it going on this long. I know, I know, absolutely, mate. I mean, like you say, like most of us, you overindulge maybe the first time over. Um, forget all your fitness DVDs, put Joe Wicks in the bin on YouTube. I've got Get Buzzing With Bez. What, what made you do this? Was it to kind of make up for the overindulgence in the first lockdown? Yeah, well, what it was, I've been working with uh, Norman Dragon, which is like a, a film production company. And uh, they, they phoned me up asking for ideas. And because... Uh, at Christmas time, went out with all all my girlfriend's family for dinner, and I bought all these new clothes before lockdown. And I thought, great, I can wear all my new clothes for Christmas dinner. I went to put them on, and they won't fit me. You know what I mean? It's like, oh shit, I can't get my pants on. You know what I mean? My shirt were bulging, and so uh, yeah, it was a bit of a shock. And I realised that I better do something about it before it's too late. Yeah, so the fitness videos on YouTube get buzzing with Bez. Had you done much exercise prior to these? Well, it used to be reasonably fit, you know what I mean, uh, when I was younger. And I never really had to uh, do exercise. I had this natural, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, I forgot the Metabolism. Word. Metabolism, ah. that's the one, yeah. And uh, I never really had to rely on fitness before, you know what I mean? Even though I, I was, I've was, i always pl- uh, played sport and, and enjoyed, you no. Know, doing things of, of that nature uh, and I never thought I'd, I'd see the day where I'd be fat, overweight and like struggling to do anything so yeah, yeah, so it's been, it was great because I, I think I've just caught it inside, I've lost over a stone in weight um, I've, well I can't say I've not been drinking but I've not been drinking as much uh, just special occasions at the moment <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, to stick it with COVID, Bez, I mean, obviously you're involved in the music and entertainment industry. What what sort of impact has the whole COVID had on that side of things, your work side of things, performing in front of big crowds? Yeah, no, it's been, it's like I say, it's, it's been terrible uh, on, on the whole industry, you know what I mean? I think the whole industry is suffering. And, um, yeah, it's like, I can't wait for this 
present uh, things had passed and we could get back to normal, back on the road again, back playing live, live shows. Like I say, I've never been at home so much in all my life since, you know, I can remember going back 30 odd years. It's the longest I've spent at home. Yeah, I mean, all, all this lockdown talk we're having just now, um, does it maybe take you back to 2005 when you were locked up under a roof for many days in the Celebrity Big Brother house, the likes of John McCrillick, Jackie yeah, Stallone? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, at least I was earning money then. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, mate. No, but has it, has it got a similar feel, in all honesty, being that sort of locked down, that enclosed in a in a certain space? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm uh, very lucky because of where I live. I've got loads of... Uh, I live in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by woodlands and a uh, beautiful countryside. So uh, we, we've had it quite lucky, you know what I mean, of not being enclosed in a house within an inner city environment. And I've had all, all my family with me as well. So we've been really lucky. We've had, you know, we've had a, a reasonably good time. But, yeah. uh, but saying that, though, if a friend of Fru's who's in a ba uh, band with Fru, they recorded their new video single and he just spent three months on his own in lockdown. And when he came out of the, he was panicking and saying, there's people, you know, and he really went into a panic because he, he just spent the lockdown on his own. Mm. And, and he, he'd gone into fear. He was panicking about meeting people because he hadn't actually physically met anyone for over three months. And uh, he, he was having a panic attack about it all. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I think that's going to be one of the things that comes out of this, Bez, is obviously it's had a big impact more so on people's mental health, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I say, I've been lucky, but I know people who have uh, actually suffered through it all, you know what I mean? And I've been on their own or living in uh, no high-rise flats or anything, in a one-bedroom flat. And uh, being in, it's like being in prison, basically, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I mean, we, we touched on the, the Big Brother side of things there. Um, you won it, Bess. You won that series. Um, what, what's your memories of that? Do you remember walking out, winner that night in front of the big crowd, cheering yeah, your name? Yeah, no, it, it, was, uh, it was a great moment because uh, I don't think, uh, for one, any of the housemates expected me to win it either. Uh, I didn't expect to win it. But what what I did know is, uh, no, Happy Mondays. We're, we're a big band. We've got massive support. And at that time, you know what I mean? And, and but I don't think what people realise how big of a following Happy Mondays uh, have. And I think it was like uh, at my fan base, the Happy Monday fan base, what, what uh, won me the show. And of course, standing up for their Rockies man when she was getting bullied in the house. That's right, Jackie Stallone. She was some character, wasn't she? Yeah, she was a great character. And she's just passed away recently. That's right. Yeah. But she had a she had a brilliant life. She had a long life. She interesting life as well. Yeah. Did you keep in touch with any of the housemates after you came out? No, not really. It's a it's a job, you know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, I would say hello to him or if I see him out and about. But uh, I didn't make any like lasting friends in there. Yeah, I mean, talking of reality TV, I mean, you mentioned the Mondays. You were known as as Bez the dancer in that band. I mean, would you ever consider the likes of Strictly if it came along? Well, you know what? I wouldn't say no to it because I can see myself. I'd love it, you know, when I get you know, into later years. I know I'm getting old now, but even later years, I'd love to see myself, you know, doing a bit of ballroom dancing, you know, and going out down there, get, getting all the ladies, spinning around the dance floor. You know, I think that could be good fun, you know what I mean? So it'd be great. I wouldn't say no to the show anyway. Definitely the the cha cha with the maracas. Oh, imagine that! It'd be such fun. <laughs> Superb, mate. Yeah, talking reality TV, Goggle Box. You do that with your good friend, the next bandmate, Sean Ryder. Uh, I mean, that's absolutely TV gold, mate. I mean, but prior to to meeting Sean, um, you actually got told you need to meet Sean, didn't you? Before you actually met him, um, do you think your paths were always designed to cross and meet yeah, each other? I think we're, I think we're destined. To, I, I think we well, we are. We're friends for life now. He's what he is one of my best friends. You know what I mean? He's a great cook there. And he's also, uh, don't, I, I, can, I don't know if I should be telling you, but I'll tell you anyway. Go for it, best. Um, throughout the lockdown, he's been quite busy himself. But he's done a great single with uh, a track with uh, Noel, Noel Gallagher. Okay. Yeah, it sounds absolutely amazing. 
and he's got a new solo album done as well, uh, which sounds really good. Some really strong tracks on there. So yeah, he's been busy through the lockdown and made some great music. Superb. So can we expect that to come out anytime soon from him? Or yeah, well, I think uh, it's it's all in the pipeline, uh, about to be released at any time. I'm not sure when. Oh, but I can tell you a really funny COVID story if you want. Go for it, Bez. Yeah, again, involving Sean. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, I know I shouldn't have a laugh at his expense if we've not been here. But he had the COVID and he was like proper ill with it. You know, he was hallucinating. He had aliens coming down, visiting him and everything. And uh, he, he knew he was going to be all right because the aliens told him. But the funny thing was, he was that ill. The only thing he could eat was fruit. And I don't know if you know, he's had alopecia and he's lost all the hair on his body and everything's fell out. Mm. And uh, so uh, three weeks, all the thing he could eat. And guess what happened? His Go. hair started to grow back. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How funny is that? That's mental. <laughs> it's a COVID miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to start eating more fruit, mate. <laughs> I mean, you do things on YouTube as well with Sean, don't you? Call the cops. Yeah, yeah, the call the cops. So shame that didn't go on. Uh, he didn't get on well with the lad who was doing the production on it. Right. Uh, he didn't quite see eye to eye with him, and unfortunately, it didn't last. But uh, it's a shame, really, because I was enjoying again working with my mate and doing something, you know, getting us out of out and about during lockdown, doing a bit of work. And a bit socialising. Yeah, I mean, I've watched a few of them. I've obviously watched you on Gogglebox as well. You've just got that rapport together where you just bounce off each other, haven't you? Do you to, to take you back to the early days when you first met Sean, did, did you move in with him? Is that right? Yeah, no, we lived together for quite a few years. Yeah. That was like a messy affair as well, you know what I mean? I felt sorry for all our neighbours. Was it? Uh, was it? A, sorry to interrupt. Was Eric Cantona one of your neighbours? He actually lived across the road from us. Did he ever come over for a, a couple of yeah, bottles of beer one weekend? A couple of lines. <laughs> <laughs> we still us that he promotes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, uh, I, I have actually worked with Eric Cantona now. When he first left United, uh, we was in this first film with him with uh, Jake Lamotto, you no know, Raging Bull. Yeah. They'd done uh, a film called uh, Question of Honor, which was like a boxing film. Oh. And, uh, yeah, so I I did his actual first. I I got the poster somewhere at home with uh, mine and Eric's name on the same poster. Probably because you're a United fan, aren't you, Bez? Yeah, yeah, United fan, and he and he's like probably one of the world's greatest players as well, can't and uh, Yeah, and it was great to spend time with him and get to know him as a, as a person. So we need to talk about the, the Happy Mondays. We've touched on it little bits and bobs already, but um, it was through a, a gentleman called Mike Pickering. The Mondays were asked to do a battle of the bands and you danced on stage with them for the first time. W were you the final piece of that, that Mondays jigsaw, Bez? Uh, well, I was the last member to join, which, uh, which was lucky for me because it was like a life-changing moment. It changed my life forever. But um, it was actually, uh, uh, well, it, I don't. I, it's a well-known story that... Uh, me and Sean was both right off our nappers and he needed moral support and I jumped on there with the maracas, shook these maracas like mad and done me like me dancing what I do and I had a hole in my hand the size of a 50 pence piece. <sighs> but the funny thing was when uh, some girl said to Sean the next day, that was really nice of you letting that kid on stage with special needs, which was my good self, you know. <laughs> But yeah, I, yeah, but it was a life changing moment. And uh, that night I went home and I actually laughed myself to sleep. Brilliant. I mean, the Mondays, they were a huge part of the Manchester scene. Both you and Sean were credited um, more than anyone else for turning Manchester into Manchester. I mean, you maybe touched on it slightly there, but, but how mad was it? Uh, well, it didn't seem mad to us at the time, you know what I mean? Mm. But the, the thing for us, it was great to be part of... Because when we was kids growing up, we always like wish we was in the 60s and part of that great, you know, uh, psychedelic summer of love explosions. And uh, for, for us, it, we had our own version of it. And to be a part of a, a, a movement like that and uh, to be... Because we had unbelievable timing for us, you know what I mean? It's all about timing. 
and we got the timing right. You know, we had the Hacienda, we saw factory records, so everything just came together perfectly for us. Yeah, the Hacienda, the Hacienda Club was right at the, the centre of it all, wasn't it? And it was at the time yeah. with the whole ecstasy explosion, uh, the Acid House movement. And did it did it all just come hand in hand with that era? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was just like, uh, you no, know, it's the timing was just perfect for us with the ecstasy explosion, the Hacienda being on Factory Records. Uh, we was the pro, a, a lads band at the time, you know what I mean? So we brought all the lads together from different football cultures all coming together and not battling and fighting each other, you know what I mean? And it, it was a great moment in time. Yeah, I mean, the band appeared on top of the pops. Um, I think it was, was it with Kirsty McCall for the first time that you were on that, doing Hallelujah? Yeah, I can't, I can't remember. No, I think it was Step On, it was. With, was it? Uh, with the Stone Roses. Yeah, I mean, how, how was your relationship with those guys, the other sort of Manchester guys, the Roses and Spiral yeah, Carpet? Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're all good friends. And people always try to, like, uh, you know, like they did with Oasis and Blur, make a thing of it. But, ah. uh, yeah, they couldn't do it. It was trying to get us at each other's throat and create this, like, battle between us. Yeah. But was, the reality was we were really good, all really good friends. That's it. The media do try and, like you say, cause that that story, don't they? I mean, the the media always seem to make it about Sean and Bez. Did that cause any friction with the other bandmates in the Mondays? Uh, no, not really. I, it, it's just that we we were the uh, front end of the band. You know what I mean? And I I felt a little bit bad because I was stealing all the glory. You know what I mean? And I wasn't really doing much for it. <laughs> I want to talk about the album Yes Please I think it's quite well noted that um, you went out to Barbados to record that I mean uh, that's not a bad gig is it out in the Caribbean recording records yeah it, it was really, yeah really good gig it was um, yeah and when we got there we was invited to uh, you know to meet the, like the, the Prime Minister or the leading, leading dignitaries of the island we're all there welcoming us to the island I mean, time we left, you know, everyone knew us from the six roads, all the drug dealers on the six road, the chief of police, the prime minister. They was all talking about us because it's such a small island. I think it's the size of Manchester, the whole island. And everyone knew us that at the end of that visit. I mean, it was all recorded in Eddie Grant's studio, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Eddie, Eddie wasn't there, luckily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His wife was there. She's a lovely lady who looks after and cook for us all. Did, uh, did, did I, don't, I don't think they'll ever have us back there, though. <laughs> did, they, did the record label send you over there to maybe try and get you away from the whole drug scene that was maybe taking over a little bit? I mean, I don't think that worked, though, did it? No, no, no. It certainly backfired on him at the time. But you know what? It made for a... Uh, uh, no bit of rock and roll lifestyle, you know what I mean? And that album did go down uh, too good. But I, I actually think it's a, a great album when you listen back to it. But because it wasn't uh, produced in, in that new style with uh, Osborne and Oakenfold, with the, that sort of dance uh, production on it, 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 to people, journalists, it sounds like it's taking a step back. But it was really well produced by, you know, Chris Ranson, team away with, no talking heads, and it was great to work, you know, with some of your heroes from childhood. And I, I actually enjoy that album when I listen back to it. I think it's a good album. Yeah, definitely. Is it still available in the likes of Apple Music, Spotify, all other good? Yeah, and I think you can. Uh, I think London Records have just uh, done the final re release of all, all, all the uh, EPs and albums of, of recent. Good. Good. Am I right in saying you were involved in a car crash over in the Caribbean? Did you break your arm? Yeah, I broke my arm, but uh, I was on the run, uh, going, getting the run, taking shortcuts through sugarcane fields. Was it you that was driving? I, I was driving, but the great thing about it, didn't break a single bottle. <laughs> so, what was it? I think you broke your arm in three places or something, but all the rum was fine. I the arm in two, but uh, yeah, I didn't I did break a single drink or... All the drink arrived home in sacks. <laughs> we, we talked about how the, the record label Factory Records sent you over there to maybe get you away from, from that sort of scene. Um, I mean, the Mondays, they were cited with being responsible for maybe the bankruptcy of Factory Records. Is that a fair statement or is that probably not no, as correct? 
uh, that's an urban myth, that one. The, the, what caused the bankruptcy was the over-expansion of uh, factory records. It went from a little bedsit flat into this whole great big, huge building, what they spent millions on doing it up. Uh, yeah, so it's a contribu contribution of a lot of different things happening. But the main thing was the, the you know, expanding too quickly and going from a, a bed sitting to this huge factory building, what cost, uh, I don't know how much it costs to do up, but well, that's where the problems arose. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thanks for clearing that up. Bess. Um, what, what, you mentioned earlier, sorry, about um, it changed your life that night when you, you got up on stage with the Maracas. What, what path do you think you would have went down had you not joined the Mondays? Well, it's hard to say, you, you just don't know, do you, you know what I mean? But no doubt it... Uh, it wouldn't have been a it, it would have been a rocky road, I reckon. <laughs> I mean, the Mondays they were a huge band. They had massive chart success, headlined the likes of Glass and toured the world. What what was what was the biggest high for you? Uh, well, that night of joining the band that was a massive high. Um, getting to meet uh, New Order that was brilliant, and Bernard another massive high, another moment I'll never forget. Uh, and just just. Being a part of the Happy Mondays, you know what I mean, and the whole adventure of it. And we're still going out today, which is amazing, you know what I mean, after all these years. We're still out there, still playing. So, it, yeah, it's um, it's been a fantastic journey. And without the, the, the ramshackle band known as the Happy Mondays, I, I, I've lived an amazing life and have a great lifestyle through it. Is there any plans in the pipeline after COVID to do any work? Well, I think we're doing the show with James in November. I think it's still going ahead if uh, if they don't take it off us, you know what I mean? Because we said we could have Christmas and they took that off us. So hopefully we still can get back into the clubs and pubs and start enjoying life again. Definitely. I've got a few random sort of quick fire questions for you, Bez. Um, are you still a beekeeper? Yeah, I, I keep bees. Well, how did you first get into that? Uh, I just had an opportunity, a bit of land. Uh, I've always loved honey. I've had always had honey in my tea, my coffee, and all my cereals. So it's been a part of my life since I can, can remember. And then uh, I got a chance uh, to be able to keep bees. And, uh, yeah, and it's just went from there, really. Superb. Um, there was a fact um, one of my mates said, oh, you've got to ask Bez this, you've got to ask if this is true. Did you once knock back a date with Julia Roberts? There's some truth in it, yeah, yeah. Go on. Yeah. It's like the, it's like when you go fishing. It's the one. It was that big, you know what I mean? It's the one you nearly had, yeah. But look, we had witnesses. Right. So, can you tell us any more, or are you not willing to? No, go no. It's, uh, no, I, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't take that opportunity. But there you go. These things yeah. happen, mate. Yeah, they happen. <laughs> I mean, your, your your dad, he was quite high up in the, the police service. Did uh, you ever have to call in any favours with the old man? No, no, there, there, there were definitely no favours coming from that direction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember as well, you used to scoot about in a, an old London black cab, but I think it was on an episode of Pimp My Ride. Did you did you keep a hold of that after that show? Uh, no, unfortunately, like most scenes, uh, it got stolen. Oh. And the only thing what I paid for was the uh, Chevy, I had a Chevy small block V8 engine gearbox, and uh, the only thing I actually paid for I didn't get back. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was going to lose it, but uh, you know what? I, I I I have the memory. Yeah, I mean, we've also asked you a lot about uh, your involvement in music with the Happy Mondays, but I mean, who who are you listening to just now? Who, who's on Bezzy's playlist? Uh, well, I go right round the world with a playlist. I, I've got uh, like we, we when me and my missus have our Saturday night party, you know what I mean? We have hours of music and we go right through every genre. Eh? To be truthful, yeah, I, 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 I love uh, I love music and listening to music. I mean, what, what's your tipple? You, you mentioned obviously that you you had a, a bit of a mad time with cider in lockdown one. But if the bars were to open right now and me and you were to go for a pint and it was my round, what? What would you What would you be having? Yeah, well, I'm always partial to a whiskey and ice. Nice one. Yeah, yeah, I love a whiskey and ice. Uh, 
I, I, I've been drinking a lot of tequila recently as well. The Patron, I like a bit of Patron. Nice one. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I love anything from the top shelf, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any whiskey in particular that tickles your fancy? Yeah, uh, I always get full of a drink. I, I, lo I love cider. Yeah. Cider's really nice, and especially because I live in Hereford now. Right, we've got we live in cider country, and uh, every hundred yards is a different cider farm. So yeah, the cider is really good round there. I'd even say it's better than Somerset cider. I don't want to upset all you Somerset folk, but I got to say, we have the best cider. Brilliant. Need to try some. Uh, I mean, over the years, have you ever done many parties or gigs up here in Scotland? God, yeah, I've been we've been going there for like thirty five years now. You know what I mean? Some of the best audiences are always the Scottish audiences. Everybody says that. What what separates the Scottish audiences from the rest? Well, it's because you're northerners, aren't you? You know what I mean? You're, you're not bothered about, um, you know, looking or all that sort of thing. All you're bothered about is having a great time, you know what I mean? And that's your main priority. Whereas, like, when you're down south, people are stood down, like, trying to look cooler than the next person and all that shit. And there's all the like things going on, but uh, what I find the further north you get, the friendlier the people can become. And and uh, but you never, we don't suffer fools. That's what I always say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk about what you're up to just now. Basically, got an exciting venture going on. It's just launched yesterday on Thursday. Obviously, it's Friday today. Um, you, I'm going to just read the headline. Beds launches his own racing club and invites fans to saddle up and join him for the ride. Tell us a bit more about this space. Yeah, yeah, well, I've been working with uh, these businessmen and uh, I got offered the opportunity to be getting involved with uh, horses and horse racing. And because uh, obviously it's locked down, uh, it was a great opportunity. Uh, I've, I've named the horse Mystic Moon Shadow uh, because I was dreaming of when I knew I was going to get a horse. I was dreaming about all oh, shit. There's roll cook screaming, go on, me, shadow at the top of my voice. And uh, so, uh, and me and my younger son that are always dancing in the garden of the full moon, also the moon shadow. So, yeah, it's got a uh, good memory for me. Uh, she's a young two year old filly. She's never raced yet. Uh, I went up this weekend to visit her with my youngest son. And I can't believe how much she's grown since I last seen her. Uh, she's looking really good. She's a fast horse. She's running. She's outpacing all the other young two-year-olds. Uh, she's got to, has to start training with all the horses because she's that fast. Yeah, I mean, anyone can get involved in this, can't they, Bez? It's uh, becoming an exclusive member of the club. Memberships can be purchased for £59. I mean, there's a lot of people that's into horses. It's a huge sport. Um, but a lot of people can't afford to be part of, like, a thoroughbred horse. Uh, this has given the chance for Joe Public to, to get involved, isesn't it? Yeah, yeah, well, it's a great way of uh, horse ownership without actually the, 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 the expense of it all. And uh, what you do, you get a chance to come and spend time with me at the races in the owner's uh, enclosure, come up to the stables, visit the stables, watch the horse training on the gallops and that. It's a really great day out. Uh, the horses at uh, Jed O'Keefe and Andrew O'Keefe's uh, stables God, I can tell you that the characters, you will not believe the personalities they have. They're right. You no, know, I'm, I'm really shocked about how, how um, you no know, friendly and but the the personalities of these animals is just crazy. And every one of them is all different. And some are like no, uh, no, but they're all so friendly. They all want to say hello to you. You can't walk past an horse without saying hello to it. I'd be really pissed off if you, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, any winnings from this is going to be donated to Manchester Homeless Charity, Coffee yeah, for Craig. Coffee for Craig, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell us, tell us a bit about uh, Coffee for Craig and the work that they do. Uh, well, it's a homeless charity in Manchester. Uh, they do great work. They rehouse people. Uh, uh, they, they do hot meals every, every seven, de seven days a week, seven nights a week. So they've got a premises up near Strange Ways. Uh, you can go in, sit down, have a hot meal, get showered, hot showers, 
watch the film of the night and and uh, we'll try and get beds for everybody you know, who, who turns up there so everyone has a bed for the night. And they just do a really fantastic job. Uh, they have a doctor there on standby, seeing people, you know, some people's medical needs. And, and they do a, a really like fantastic job. Brilliant. I mean, this can all, you can find out more about this, obviously, it's at bezracingclub.com. Like we said, you can become an exclusive member uh, for as little as £59 a year. Bez, you said that obviously people can, can come and meet you and stuff like that once this whole lockdown lifts. Um, when it lifts, I've got here, it says you're going to be offering competitions to come and join in the race days, raise a glass, watch it from the owner's enclosure, etc, etc. Will you be giving maybe tips to the, the people that join up to say maybe well, this yeah, is the week? Well, Taking gambling sips of me might not be a good thing. I had a, I had a bet on the Gold Cup at Cheltenham Gold Cup this weekend. Did rubbish. I'm not I'm not known for me gambling finesse, you know what I mean? But hopefully, you know, now I've got, I've got on, the, on the inside, I might get a few good sips that we could share, you know, and there we could go. go along with a few quid in our pocket. <laughs> Absolutely. Have you done any horse riding at all, Bez? Have you ever been on a horse, sir? Well, you know what? Uh, I've done donkey. I rode the donkeys at Blackpool. It's not quite the same, but uh, no, I had to go on a, a beautiful horse called Billy, a big hunt, a hunt horse, and you got to see the size of this fellow. He's like as big as a tower block. And actually, he's looked at the photographs of me on this horse, and my face was a picture of fear. Like, ah! I didn't know I could pull such a face. You know what I mean? But. Uh, but saying that, though, is that I've booked a few days up in North Yorkshire uh, uh, for me, me and my youngest son. And we're going to go up there for a few days and learn to ride horses. Brilliant. I mean, like you said, you're away up to North Yorkshire when, when you're able to do that. As soon as lockdown kind of lifts and we're able to get away on holidays, where, where would you go to best? Where's your destination of choice? Well, at the moment, we can't go anywhere but England. But my favourite place, uh, and we go every year as a family, it's I love Cornwall. Like it's one one of my favourite places, and I've travelled all over the world. And they always ask me, and I always say Cornwall. Like I've uh, I've got a little fishing boat down there as well. I love going fishing. Uh, it's a big family holiday, so all the family is together, and it's actually my favourite holiday. Super, but like it's, lovely. It's, it's, it's not that bad at the moment. I'm going on holiday in North Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> You're going up the way instead of down. <laughs> Bez, there was a time that you were into politics. Do you still have a, a buzz for politics? or? Uh, well, the politic thing was, uh, it wasn't so much about politics, but raising awareness about the fracking issue. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, my politics went down really poorly because... I ate the right and they ate the left. I, I was stood as an anarchist and they were saying everything should be free. You know, get rid of the bankers, get rid. So nobody got that side. And it's going out. No, nobody can imagine life without money. So my politics went down crap. Nobody got it. And uh, I was getting people from, from the far right coming confronting me. I was getting the all the left-wing socialists going, Bez, you fucking disappoint me. You know what I mean? But uh, I was giving it both left and right. But the main thing was the fracking issue. And uh, we did really well on raising awareness on the fracking. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, politicians, it's something that's obviously they're in our, our newspapers and our TVs daily. You see Boris up here in Scotland. We've got Nicola Sturgeon. They're telling us that everybody should go get the, the COVID jab. Have you had yours yet, Bess? Well, no, I, I'm, uh, well I, I've had, I've, I have had COVID myself. Right. So I think I've got natural uh, antibodies at the moment. So uh, I don't see the need for me to go and get it just yet. Uh, and I'm holding out because, um, you know, I want to see what, what the effects could be on the populace. You know, 12 months, two years down the line, we don't know. Uh, we don't know for sure that it's 100% safe, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, my mum's had it, my dad's had it. I know people who've had it. Um a lot of people I know who's had it has been uh, bloody ill for three or four days after having it. So I uh, don't fancy being ill again from the bloody thing, you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I, I probably will end up having it. But for the moment, I'm, uh, I'm going to dodge the bullet and uh, see what happens down the line, see if there's any side effects. You don't know what, what, what effects it's going to have on the populace down, later down the line. 
but it's it, on the whole, is uh, I'm not against vaccines at all. I think it's a good thing, but uh, I just think uh, it might be rushed a little bit. It's not gone through its, its normal testing. It normally takes years and years of testing before they declare anything safe. And the worrying thing for me is that all these uh, vaccinations, they've all been granted impunity. So if they, it does go wrong, they can't be sued, you know what I mean? So that it, it, if they're positive, it's 100% safe. Why have they asked for impunity? Good point, mate. Good point. I'm yeah, sure there's yeah. a lot. But yeah. I, I, I think it's great. Me, me mum and dad have had it, you know what I mean? And they feel a lot safer for having it. So... You know, it, it's it, it's a decision what you've got to make for yourself. But I don't think uh, you should be forced into having it because of... Uh, I don't like the idea that people say you can't go to pubs, you can't do this, you can't do that unless you've got your buddy um, thingy. Because that, that's forcing people to, uh, uh, to do something, you know, what they may not be sure of. And, you know, it takes time, you know, and you've got everyone's entitled to making a decision of their own over it. And, and you know, if people are protected, they've got no, nothing to worry about if, if, it, if it works. But uh, we don't know if it's even going to work yet. There's all these new strains of COVID about. And what they're saying, it won't actually stop you getting COVID, but stop you just from getting os hospitalised from it. And when I had it, I, 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 because I've got a good immune system, I was, I was over it in three days. That's, I mean, everybody kind of handles it different, don't they? I mean, you mentioned yeah, how bad yeah. Sean had it. Yeah, well, Sean had it. He was really ill. He was ill for three weeks with it, and he's of poor health. Uh, he's, uh, I was really worried when Sean had it. You know what I mean? Because he, he, he's not uh, the healthiest of people, and uh, yeah, I was really concerned for him. But uh, he came through, he, he got through, he didn't get hosp hospitalised with it at all. And he, he came through, but he, he had the slow COVID. So he's still suffering um, ill effects, you know, weeks after having it. So he, he, he really was ill from it. So it affects different people in different ways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I love. I could sit and speak to you all day, Bez, about the stories with you and Sean. I mean, there's a couple I never really mentioned. You went over to the states with with the Mondays, didn't you? Was there a time that you were? I mean, again, I, I I don't know how serious this was, but did did the the Americans not quite get the the Manchester sort of vibe? Was there a gun pulled out at Sean at one point? Yeah, and... I, don't know, we, I don't know really. When we went over there, we weren't the, the brilliant, but at our best, you know what I mean, was like a, a Manchester uh, band. I don't think they got us. I don't even think they could understand us even, you know what I mean, what we were talking about. But, uh, yeah, it was great. It was a great experience. We, we've we had some good times over in America. Uh, the only thing is we spent all our money there, <laughs> living, the, living the high life. <laughs> what parts of America did you enjoy the most? Uh, well, we, we lived there for eight weeks in LA. Right. That was really good. Uh, we visited New York when it was proper New York, when it, when it was like rough and tough and dangerous. You know what I mean? And we stayed in the Chelsea Old Cell where uh, Sid killed Nancy, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a famous downtown uh, whole cell full of uh, beatniks and that the type, you know, poet. I uh, is uh, type so yeah, it was great. Was there a time in America where the the, the group Guns and Roses couldn't keep up with you? Yeah, yeah, no, we we once got stuck in a whole cell with him uh, when we did Rock the Rio because uh, of our rock and roll reputations. But I can safely say that uh, I think we were more crazy than they were. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's it. I mean, you've you've conquered. You know, if everything travelled the world, you've been top of the charts, on top of the pops. You're now going to conquer the race world. If you want to join Bez on that journey, get online. It's bezracingclub.com for as little as fifty nine pounds. You can get involved. I'm going to sign up tomorrow. It's a done deal. Bez, it's been an absolute treat having you on the show this week. Thanks for coming yeah. on. That's all, mate. Thanks for having us. And uh, take care, mate. Take it easy, Bez. Cheers, mate. Yeah, catch you in a bit. Bye.